Hello everyone, welcome to the LLM show. I'm your host Shamin Siri. In today's episode, I actually want to talk about different types of parameter efficient fine tuning methods and what are their similarities and differences. Actually, there are quite a few PEF methods and they look quite similar for me. And I thought of trying to understand what are the main differences in them and also the similarities. Then I had quite a rough time to understand this stuff because uh, there are so many articles and all but um, they don't kind of compare all these methods uh, much you know in, in terms of architectural details and stuff and also another factor is like almost all these methods are pretty much implemented in PEF library and within two or three lines you just can import these methods and just plug it to your transformer model and just train this stuff so basically this is like kind of seamless but it is always good to kind of understand what are the basics because it might help you in the long run and yeah then i thought of like doing this video and uh, i went through several uh, articles and kind of gathered this information and yeah enough talking and let's jump into the topic i try to put all these main parameter efficient training methods into a slide and the introduction date uh, so basically you can find most of these implementations uh, in the hugging phase pef library so let's uh, start with adapters like there are two papers first one is learning multiple visual domains with the residual adapters which came in 2017 then this is like the one that that is pretty much relevant to us parameter efficient transfer learning for nlp 2019 then we go to prefix tuning which is like uh, optimizing continuous prompts for generation uh, 2021 jan and then uh, p tuning the paper name is gpt understands 2 which is like 2021 march uh, and then uh, prompt tuning paper the power of scale for parameter efficient prompt tuning which is like 2021 September and then finally low rank adapters we talk about this in QLora QLora is basically quantization plus LoRa low rank adaptation of large language models uh, 2021 October so you can see all these methods basically got introduced in the same year so of course they have a lot of similarities uh, and yeah they kind of have built on top of uh, each other as well so let's start with adapters first let's go to the paper of adapter um so yeah this is the adapter paper and uh, this this paper is from google and first authors explain what is an adapter adapter modules yield a compact and it's extensible extensible model they add only a few trainable parameters per task and new tasks can be added without revisiting previous ones and then um, they have this nice uh, figure which says like uh, adapter base fine tuning attains a similar performance to full fine tuning with two orders of magnitude fewer trained parameters so basically less trainable parameters but still uh, you get uh, similar or better results which is pretty good compared to fine tuning uh, some top players like you know good order fine tuning so then um, in the paper they mainly mention like what are the key properties of um these adapters it attains good performance of course it permits training on task sequentially that is it does not require simultaneous access to all data sets and then it adds only a small number of additional parameters which is pretty good and uh, yeah let's now go to the uh architectural diagram of an adapter which is kind of pretty simple this is the good old day transform block in a transformer model we have several blocks like this so what they do is they have injected at uh, two adapters to each block like uh, one before the first layer now one before the second layer now you know so basically uh, this block uh, shows uh, what is uh, inside of an adapter so what happens is you have the input and then you have a feed forward uh, down projection 
this is like a bottleneck layer then you have some non-linearity and then you have a feed forward up projection layer uh, then what happens is this output uh, kind of get added uh, to the uh, skip connection right so basically uh, this is uh, what an adapter is so uh, then they actually explain how they connect uh, transform output with an adapter layer output so the idea is the output of each sub layer is fed into layer normalization we insert two serial adapters after each of these sub layers the adapter is always applied directly to, to the uh, output of the sub layer after the projection back to the input size but before adding this skip connection back so basically what they say is so adapter layer works always before the skip connection so this is the output of the adapter then you add the input with the output of the adapter because then because what you need to understand is dimension of uh, the output of the adapter is same as the dimension of um, input of the adapter that's where you kind of can add them this is a simple skip connection right so this is basically the adapter module you know like uh, things you need to understand is uh, it get applied um, inside a transform block and then uh, what happens is it's a serial thing that's the main thing you need to understand later on um, this is uh, really useful because especially when you want to understand what is the difference between adapters and LoRa I kind of uh, noted this uh, serial thing in adapters um, yeah so um, if someone asks like why we uh, have this uh, bottleneck layer of course in order to reduce the number of parameters so what happens is here now you have a bottleneck layer and then a non-linearity and a feed forward up projection but imagine if you don't have a bottleneck layer you are, you need to have a fully connected layer from here to here which can add a lot more parameters um, those are the main and also i like this figure basically validation accuracy versus the number of training parameters you can see um, validation accuracy of adapters kind of can stay the same regardless of number of trainable parameters so basically adapter layers how many parameters we add so this is basically uh, your fine tune top layer method you can kind of uh, increase number of layers and uh, kind of add uh, number of uh, parameters you can see when the number of trainable parameters are less um, it is uh, it is not performing uh, even close to uh, adapters but yeah so this shows like adapters can deal with less number of uh, parameters and they also mention like they have used different settings adding um, different adding adapters for different positions like normalizations attentions and also different non-linearity different activations but what they say is um, they found uh, out this simple method uh, works better so um, everything like these adapter layers and everything they are already implemented in hugging base Fef library you just can call them within few lines but yeah mm. so finally I actually saw some nice thing in uh, the uh, um, appendix so let's go there yeah i really like this learning rate robustness so you can see uh, you kind of can change the learning rate but still adapters can um, give the same result so it's pretty good like at least we don't need to um, you know do a hyperparameter tuning on the learning rate this can actually save us some bucks you know because yeah that's pretty much it so that is adapters just to wrap this up the idea is this network this network architecture says everything this is the main difference you inject adapter layers inside a transform block especially just before the layer norms and just before adding the input you know with a skip connection so let's move to the next one the prefix tuning which is like 2021 jan uh, so yeah prefix tuning is from Stanford 
and um, so basically the idea is really nice prefix tuning draws inspiration from prompting allowing subsequent uh, tokens to attend to this prefix as if it were virtual tokens so the idea is like pretty simple uh, we all know prompt learning kind of uh, prompt learning was a thing with gpt3 because people started to realize uh, when you change the input you kind of can um, get better or worse results from a gpt like here like uh, we call them like hard prompts like we literally put those text right uh, to the model but then um, what these authors have done is like they basically oh listen we're gonna learn these prompts like we're gonna learn these prompts from back propagation so they are like virtual tokens so how they do is they have a transformer block and they have a bunch of uh, prefixes like some task translation summarization uh, table to text then what they do is uh, they basically uh, take uh, this prefix and then they send it through a tokenization model like let's say this prefix is translation and then uh, then what you do is you kind of initialize some embeddings right you kind of initialize some embeddings for uh, each of these uh, tasks and then uh, append it to the input and um, like some other layers of the transformer block so then the idea is how you can initialize these uh, embeddings for each uh, task just imagine this is um, um, more like a trainable embedding matrix right so um, the other thing you need to understand is um, they do not touch the pre-trained transformer model that means all the parameters um, are kept frozen during this uh, prefix tuning procedure so um, then the big question is how you can uh, uh, kind of uh, um, initialize this embedding so one way would be to just to randomly initialize right um, so but what author says like when they have done experiments uh, they have found um, to like uh, it would be better to better not to randomly initialize uh, these uh, embeddings because uh, it it can degrade performance so as a remedy for that what authors have done is basically they take some let's say you take this prefix summarization then you send it through uh, the tokenizer of the gpt3 model and then you can extract the embeddings related to this uh, prefix right from the gpt3 model uh, but what you do is actually you actually copy those embeddings to your embedding table like you don't touch the original embeddings of the model but you only take take a copy of these embeddings from the gpt3 like word embeddings or like token embeddings and then you create the your embedding table and you only fine tune this embedding table so that's the main thing in uh, prefix tuning intuitively the context can influence the encoding of x by guiding what to extract from x and can influence the generation of y by steering the next token description so the idea is x is your text like let's say now your prompt is summarization and you uh, copy uh, copy a huge news article and then um, your y is uh, the expected summary of it so what they are saying is this x encoding or these extra tunable vectors kind of can guide the process uh, kind of can say like what to extract from um, from the input so yeah that is pretty much the uh, prefix tuning and um, then uh, this is also important they say if if you like kind of directly get these embeddings from the embedding matrix and plug it to the uh, plug it to the uh, input and the other layers of the transformer it won't work it will create some um, unstable scenarios so what they do is they basically send those embeddings through a um, like uh, fully connected layer like a small matrix you know like uh, 
uh, composed with a large feed forward neural network so then another thing is initialization we just talk about it random initialization leads to low performance with high variance initializing prefix with uh, activation of real world significantly improve uh, the generation so again rather than having a random uh, vector why not use uh, use a prefix for summary for summarization task use the prefix summarization for question answering use a prefix like question answering summarization table test table to text and yeah uh, that's pretty much it then uh, the important thing uh, because in every paper i kind of want to highlight how they kind of compare their method with the previous method so here they literally compare while uh, compare the prefix tuning method with adapters while prefix tuning and adapter tuning both freeze pre-trained parameters they tune different sets of parameters to affect the activation layers of the transformer recall that prefix tuning keeps the language model intact and uh, use prefix and uh, the pre-trained attention block to affect uh, subsequent activations so what they're saying is like basically um, when they are using um, the prefix tuning they they actually um, uh, they actually modify the input and um, then uh, they use the attention blocks of uh, the original model to kind of extract the information and do everything because they are not uh, modifying those stuff right and um, uh, then what they say is uh, adapter tuning insert trainable modules between LM la layers which directly adds uh, add residual uh, vectors to the activation here we just talk right so basically what they say is um, like the architectural differences right so here you just append to the input and every layer like you kind of can append, append uh, because uh, let's say uh, f you first append these uh, prefixes uh, to the input and then you also append these uh, prefixes to the uh, um, output of the first layer before going into the second layer so that's how uh, the prefix tuning works right uh, and more importantly we observe that prefix tuning requires vastly fewer parameters compared to adapter tuning while maintaining comparable performance so yeah this is also a major thing right mm. uh, and yeah this is uh, pretty much uh, what uh, prefix tuning is about but main thing you need to actually understand is uh, actually I, uh, the the main thing is uh, if you can have uh, you can you kind of append these tokens to input as well as like after the every layer kind of thing it's like because uh, transformer transformer can consist of several layers like several transform blocks so basically you append these uh, tokens uh, uh, tokens to the every layer you know like uh, that's how what uh, uh, they do Uh, so the next one is p tuning uh, which is like from the paper uh, next so the next one is p tuning from the paper gpt understands too so um, although p tuning is in parameter efficient fine tuning methods i do find some differences compared to um, other pef methods so let's kind of see what are the main differences so um, in the paper or to say in this work we propose a novel method p tuning to automatically search prompts in the continuous space to bridge gap between gpts and nlu applications so it's more like a prompt search method which uh, which is like an automatic method as well you know mm, that means it uses some parameters to search these new prompts um, and then um like the main difference of p tuning paper from other papers is like you can see 
our discovery breaks at the stereotype that gpts can only generate but not understand so this is this is like yes it has some parameter efficient fine tuning um like um, like um, focus but uh, also they have some um, other focus uh, areas as well you know like uh, and also uh, p tuning also serves as a general method to tune pre-trained language models uh, for the best downstream in task performance so basically you can see their contributions so their main one of the main contribution is they say like gpt is also like competitive and they also can reason that is like uh, something bit different from other papers i read but yeah let's go through what is p tuning so let's uh, kind of go through this uh, mm, table so what they say is like it is more like they are um, kind of uh, motivation to develop this kind of a thing so this is like the prompt learning like you literally have uh, hard prompts um, and you kind of create your input prompt with several of them and then you you also append uh, the uh, input that you want to get uh, get get results um, and here you can see what they show is like if when you use hard prompts if you change uh, sometimes if you change uh, some words slightly the uh, precision can be uh, different so they say like uh, hard prompts uh, hard prompts are kind of uh, you know they can uh, yield a drastic difference so their motivation is why not we let a model to um, come up with this prompting method then again another important thing you need to notice you can see like although this is an automatic prompt learning method they still work with a template so there is some kind of human in the loop thingy you know you need still need to create a template it's more like learning the template rather than just um, using a simple prefix uh, like in um, previous uh, prefix tuning uh, method so let's kind of see the method uh, p tuning only applies non-invasive modification to the input nevertheless the p tuning replaces input embeddings of pre-trained language model with its uh, differential output embeddings so this is also a major difference i've seen so in other methods they don't touch anything so here but what they say is they also have a method that can generate differentiable embeddings and um, uh, these embeddings kind of uh, uh, kind of can replace the original language models embedding during the um, inference like or during the training like that's the main thing the function of prompt p is to organize context x target y uh, and um, itself into a template so basically x it's like how to organize my context and my target into a template so they have this nice example in the task of predicting a country's capital a template may be the capital of britain is so basically you uh, you keep keep this token as is and you input it to the model and model should predict like mm, the capital of the britain london is it london it should be right um so so then um we'll, we'll go through this figure too the capital of is a prompt britain the context and mass is the targets so the idea is you can see this is like the discrete prompt search here the difference is you can see so basically you have some uh, pseudo prompts and you have a prompt encoder and then um, uh, you kind of uh, use some um, you kind of use different set of embeddings um, to kind of uh, represent the template and then get the output so yeah we'll go through the description so then it's it is really easy to understand um, an example of prompt search 
the capital of Britain is mask given the context blue zone Britain so the context is the blue one right so this is what we input and uh, target is the red zone this is what but uh, the model should fill and the orange zone uh, refers to the prompt token so the orange one is the prompt this is like the template right that's what they say so in a a means like the usual prompt generation scenario the prompt generated generator only received uh, discrete rewards uh, on the uh, contrary in b the pseudo prompts and uh, prompt encoder can be optimized in a differentiable way so what what they're saying is like if you have this kind of a prompt generator it generate text directly and uh, based on the answer of the gpt you can't uh, optimize this uh, in a differential way it's more like a reward right uh, but um, when it comes to p tuning uh, they kind of uh, use uh, these differentiable template embeddings plus usual like your x like your input just keep it keep as is let the model to process that embedding and uh, uh, find the answer so you can um, kind of fine-tune this uh, in a differentiable way so the prompt encoder is actually an LSTM layer that's the idea you can see uh, this is like an LSTM layer so you have some template so this is like the template this is like uh, the input and the template is right now uh, what we do is we kind of uh, generate embeddings uh, which are differentiable for each uh, template token so the main thing you need to understand here is basically this is all about how we combine these differentiable new embeddings or template embeddings with the context and kind of get the output while fine-tuning the entire thing so you can easily highlight a huge difference of this method p tuning with prefix tuning in prefix tuning what we do is we still use the context as is and we use uh, already uh, trained embeddings um, and also we uh, do not touch any embeddings we don't swap any embeddings of the original language model this is the part where our authors mainly talk about how their method is uh, different from uh, prefix tuning so uh, they mainly tell um, prefix tuning also adopts a similar strategy to our p tuning to train continuous prompts so nevertheless they are uh, they are different in several aspects first prefix tuning is designed for nlg and gpts while p tuning targets nlu and all types of language models so what they say is in the previous work prefix tuning is mainly for natural language generation and they are saying p tuning is for any task like natural language understanding or any types of like even a classification task because you have this template right you are learning a template so uh, you can use it uh, for these uh, sentiment classification and all these tasks as well second uh, prefix tuning only allows adding uh, prompt tokens at the beginning of the input sequence yes we talk about it because uh, it 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 does not touch the context right it just let the context to go through uh, these uh, transformer layers already trained uh, and um, kind of append these new trainable embeddings while p tuning can insert tokens anywhere yeah because it's a template so template tokens could be in the beginning or in the end and you kind of can put your context into the middle so uh, third prefix tuning uh, invasively concatenates uh, continuous prompt token in every layer of the transformer because the authors find uh, mere prompting in the input does not uh, take effect so this is this is another important fact about the um, prefix tuning basically in prefix tuning uh, 
they concatenate the continuous prompt tokens in every layer of the transformer it's not just in the first layer of the transformer because what they are, what they have seen is not it's not uh, powerful enough if you only concatenate these prompts um, prompt token prompt uh, embeddings in, to the input yeah so ptun non invasively add continuous prompts only in the in only in the input to work well uh, despite the differences, we believe both PT union and prefix union point are that learning continuous prompts um, is useful and superior to discrete prompt searching. Yeah, this is pretty much it. But I actually saw something related to the experiment, so this is interesting. Unlike other work, um, PT union authors have actually uh, done experiments in fully fine tune, like. They have also done experiments in like kind of uh, this frozen state settings as well but um, compared to other work they they have shown like uh, some results when they fine-tune the entire pre-trained model right so they have trained the entire pre-trained model by while adding this uh, kind of uh, p-tuning um, I would say PT unit method and then um, when it comes to their super glue results they have achieved the best results when they are fine-tuning the entire model because they have done their experiments with bird base bird large these are not like uh, GPT-3 so basically they can still uh, fine-tune in uh, so you can say see like it gives really good results especially when fine-tuning um, all the parameters so this is something you need to understand about uh, p-tuning and yeah just to wrap up the p-tuning thingy you can all you need to understand is like when it comes to p-tuning um, uh, you kind of have a template but that template is not just uh, hard uh, prompts or just text they are like trainable embeddings and during the training or fine-tuning process uh, unlike um, prefix tuning we kind of swap these trainable embeddings related uh, to the uh, template with the original language uh, models embeddings and we kind of uh, use uh, uh, original embeddings for the context and also for the output so basically this is more like a template learning as well you know so these are the main uh, differences uh, when it comes to uh, prefix tuning and prompt tuning p tuning yes p tuning is actually a bit different method from other parameter efficient methods so then we are going to the prompt tuning method so for me prompt tuning method and prefix tuning method are so similar like p tuning is still um, a bit away from both of these two methods and uh, um, but let's go through uh, the prompt tuning paper yes so this is the prompt tuning paper it is from google research and um, basically in the abstract it says our method can be seen as a simplica simplification of the recently proposed prefix tuning so which is really good i really like you just tell this is like simplification of uh, prefix tuning uh, which is good right we like to have simplified versions so then there's this nice graph that gives a lot of insights so basically the, what they say is standard model tuning of t5 achieves strong performance but requires storing separate copies of model for each um in task so basically what they say is this is good multitasking is good but still you kind of uh, want to train a model uh, separately for each task but then they say our prompt tuning of uh, t5 matches the quality of model tuning as size increases so this is a really good insight seems like when you are applying this uh, methods like prompt tuning um, it is important to 
think of the size of the pre-trained model so what they say is when the size of the model keeps increasing your performance gets better so yeah this is like a really good thing you know like that what they say is uh, maybe applying uh, PEF methods for bigger models would work better than applying them to uh, smaller models let's go through it so then uh, yes again they are saying prompt tuning only requires storing small uh, task specific from to each task so basically this is very similar to prefix tuning you can see like uh, you can have several tasks uh, several task prefix and then um, you can uh, get the get uh, those embeddings and then you can append them to input and uh, simply uh, like uh, do the fine tuning of these uh, newly added uh, like uh, task specific uh, embeddings so then this part is really important they are saying here yeah, our work is kind of similar to prefix tuning methods but we are the first to show that prompt tuning alone is sufficient to be competitive with model tuning so what they're saying is they don't have any intermediate layer prefixes because in prefix tuning i just mentioned you need to append these uh, prefix embeddings to the uh, different uh, transformer layers but here you, you just append uh, these prefix embeddings only to the input and also you don't need task specific output layers that means i think pretty much like uh, you, this works with uh, multitasking setup um yeah so that is uh, pretty much it for prompt tuning this is also an important part so if someone asks how prompt tuning method uh, kind of uh, initialize uh, its uh, tunable task embeddings or prompts um, so how they do is given a series of n tokens the first thing t5 does is uh, embed the tokens forming a matrix uh, where e is the dimension of embedding space our soft prompts are represented as a parameter pe where p is the length of the prompt uh, our prompt is then uh, concatenated to the in, uh, em embedded uh, input format in a single matrix um, which then flow flows through the encoder decoder as normal so this part actually explain about how they combine um, they are prompt embeddings with uh, the input so basically they append it uh, append it to the uh, like input embeddings uh, and um, then how they create these uh, embeddings or how they initialize these uh, task specific embeddings is similar to the uh, you know like prefix tuning they say like uh, conceptually our soft prompt modulate uh, the frozen networks behavior in the same way as the text uh, proceed in the input so it follows that a uh, word like representation might serve as a good initialization spot so what you can do is like uh, use a tokenizer and you uh, kind of get the tokens and then copy that embedding uh, pre-trained embedding matrix as the tunable embedding matrix for your task tokens Mm, so the simplest is to train from the scratch using random initialization a more sophisticated option is to initialize each prompt token to an embedding drawn from models vocabulary so yeah that's pretty much the prompt tuning this section they actually highlight what are the main differences in p-tuning and their method so what they say is Liu et al propose p-tuning where learnable continuous prompts are interleaved throughout the embedding input using patterns based on human design so basically they are saying like p-tuning is more like learning learning a template but here our one is like we don't have any human intervention like that we just um, append it to the input and which is really easy like uh, uh, compared to even even compared to the prefix tuning where you need to add it to the every layer um, our approach removes this complication by simply prepending prompt to the input yes 
to achieve strong superglue results pt tuning has to be used in conjunction with the model tuning that is model jointly update both prompts and main parameters so yeah this is also a big thing they are saying although they say it's uh, it can give good results especially p tuning they have to actually in order to get those really good results you actually need to fine tune the entire model parameters as well as these uh, p tuning parameters so yeah this is the main difference and all right this is lora low rank adaptation of large language models so this is not adapters this is adaptation of large language models so we propose low rank adaptation or lora which freezes the pre-trained model weights and injects trainable rank decomposition matrices into each layer of the transform architecture greatly reducing the number of trainable parameters for downstreaming task yeah so basically this is also kind of similar to adapters you inject uh, these trainable parameters to every block right but the way of injection is the main difference for me in um, lora and adapters so they are saying lora is efficient compared to adapters because there's no latency i think i kind of get it how um, get it why lora is efficient basically lora is not a serial operation compared to um, the adapters so should i talk about uh, this uh, lora model in my previous q lora video especially q lora is quantization plus lora but we kind of can um, go through uh, the mathematical concept again to refresh your memory so the idea is like uh, you have a huge pre-trained weight matrix and you this is frozen and somehow you need to fine tune uh, these new layers uh, where you like these new lower layers and what is the intuition behind it so the idea is like uh, although we can't decompose this huge weight matrix into a uh, low matrix like low dimensional matrix because this uh, matrix uh, consists of uh, so many independent things so it's it's, it's not uh, possible but what they say is the gradients of this matrix can be decomposed into a low low rank matrix right so if you go to the section four our method this equation explains the theory behind the concept of uh, lora so let's say we have this uh, big large language model and we need to do a gradient update so in order to do a gradient update what we need to do is we need to update the weight matrix with, with its gradients right so here the weight matrix is w naught and um, delta w is like the uh, gradients of that weight matrix and uh, usually what we do is we can we kind of update uh, w naught with delta w then uh, we use uh, our input to kind of uh, get the output from that updated weights so basically you can write you can kind of represent the same thing as w naught x plus delta w x what happens in lower is pretty much similar to adapters in in an architectural wise but theoretically it's different this is more like a reparameterization right like you kind of uh, represent this uh, gradient matrix with uh, different set of parameters but uh, in the implementation wise it's kind of same you know like this is the bottleneck layer this is the down projection this is the up projection also during the initialization they make sure this down projection uh, is like uh, normally initialized and the up projection is like a uh, bunch of zeros why they have done this is like during the first pass they don't want to like kind of mess up uh, this uh, LoRa network uh, they kind of want to use uh, almost all these uh, valuable information in the frozen parameter so basically in the first pass part what happens is since B is zero the output is pretty much zero and you kind of use this pro frozen outputs and compute the gradients and then you update this part so that's how uh, it works so after that you will um, keep updating both of this uh, up project down projection and up projection layers uh, yeah that's pretty much uh, LoRa and um, then uh, 
they also explained about LoRa possesses several key advantages a pre-trained model can be shared and uh, used to build many small LoRa modules for different tasks um, we can uh, freeze uh, the shared model and uh, efficiently switch tasks by replacing the matrices a and b in figure one reducing the storage requirement and task switch overhead uh, significantly so the idea is with laura you kind of can you can see like this is not 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 uh, get uh, injected to the transformer model in a serial way compared to adapters so you kind of can keep this uh, you can keep several these kind of laura uh, models for different tasks and you can keep one frozen uh, network and um, just like uh, you can predict uh, you can predict your output for different tasks by using these different pre-trained LoRa layers and also LoRa makes training more efficient and lowers the hardware barrier to the entry up to three times when using adaptive optimizers so basically they have used something like adaptive optimizers because they don't need to calculate gradients or maintain the optimizer state for most of the parameters yes because you only find tune this and you can see this is also like kind of uh, not not a serial injection right and our simple linear design allows us to merge the trainable uh, matrices with the the frozen weights when deployed so yeah this is also an important thing and just uh, keep uh, you can just add this to the parameter matrix right because this is more like a skip connection right then adding uh, the new parameters uh, you know serially um, yeah that's pretty much the LoRa actually we talk about LoRa and uh, so the under uh, so it is important to understand like prefix tuning and fine tuning they are like kind of same and uh, adapters and LoRa also kind of same but uh, LoRa is pretty simple compared to adapters as well you know uh, and this paper actually shows uh, s some uh, good comparison results with other parameter efficient methods according to them LoRa works really well um, yeah that's uh, pretty much it about LoRa main difference of LoRa from uh, adapters is I would say it's it's like it's fast you know when it comes to inference with because of this uh, linear uh, design of their uh, layers and so we kind of went through all these uh, like uh, main things adapters prefix tuning p tuning prompt tuning and low rank adapters adapt low rank adaptation oh. adaptation sorry about that and um, so in order to close this thing like uh, there's a nice uh, block another blog post from lightning ai it's it has these uh, uh, low rank adaptation they have compared low rank adaptation and um, llama adapter and llama adapter v2 so llama adapter and llama adapter v2 uh, basically it's kind of a composition of both the uh, adapters plus prefix tuning um, so they kind of also show like uh, uh, time like that it took to uh, train uh, basically uh, if you fully fine-tune the model you need uh, you need like six GPUs it would take like 8.52 hours and adapter one this is like llama adapter one this is llama adapter version two so you can see like uh, LoRa is kind of pretty much comparable with adapt llama adapter and uh, memory wise uh, the best one is like llama adapter one it takes 16.2 gig like falcon 7 billion and um, then laura takes 16.27 uh, laura takes 16.27 and um, then oh my god like if you don't use parameter efficient methods like uh, it's 39.45 gb for gpu so you need like literally six gpus um, where each GPU should have at least 40 gigabytes 
so Falcon 7 billion model mm, and these are like parameters you can see adapter llama adapter 1 and LoRa the number of LoRa parameters are kind of same and uh, yeah they will say like uh, when it comes to quality llama adapters and LoRa kind of they are like the same so this is also an important thing to note like maybe these methods work pretty much in a similar way but the idea of this uh, episode is to kind of understand what are the differences kind of quickly check uh, what is llama adapters all right to conclude this episode let's kind of quickly revisit uh, so some uh, details in the pytorch lightning block so basically this is the fixed union this is one transformer block uh, you can see like uh, you concat uh, uh, these soft prompts to the input uh, and um, then uh, you do it uh, like in other blocks as well I guess so uh, fully connected layers refers to a small multi-layer perceptron these fully connected layers embed the soft prompts in a feature space that means vectors uh, with the same dimensionality as the transformer um, block input to ensure uh, compatibility and concatenation yeah so that's how uh, they do it uh, so this is like the uh, pseudo code for the uh, prefix tuning according to the lightning block so you have a soft prompt you have the input and this is like the fully connected uh, layer like because uh, remember in prefix tuning authors have mentioned like uh, training it uh, directly can create some unstable scenarios in the fine tuning and yeah this is like the con you concatenate um, like uh, the soft prompt and the input and you have like bunch of residual um, connections yeah that's it um, and yeah this is like the adapters of course we talk about these adapters where you put these adapter blocks um, and yeah this is like the adapters pseudocode you have the input X and uh, this is like basically the transform block with uh, an adapter you have the residual X and uh, self attention then you have the adapter this is like prefix tuning plus adapters is like the uh, llama adapter let's let's quickly go through the llama adapter actually there are some uh, differences as well for instance only a self attention inputs key and value sequences are modified via the tunable self soft prompt so you kind of use this soft prompt but you make sure that soft prompt has an uh, effect on uh, when you are computing this forward computation this soft from has an effect on only has an effect on key and values not the curve vector and also then depending on the gate in factor the prefix modified attention is either be used uh, either used or not this concept is illustrated here mm, so uh, so what they say is in short the differences between llama adapter and regular prefix tuning are llama adapter only modifies uh, top transformer blocks and introduce gating mechanism to stabilize training so basically they need to stabilize training they don't want to just um, change these uh, attention layers uh, like in a drastic way but the idea is like I feel like LoRa is still much more simple compared to LAM adapter and still it works you can see uh, the results like uh, still like LAM adapters and LoRa works pretty much same so I would definitely go for LoRa uh, it's my personal opinion yeah like that's pretty much it and um, today we talk about these uh, main topics and uh, we'll try we actually try to understand um, what are the uh, differences in these uh, methods and um, yeah in order to conclude this episode I actually want to summarize all these uh, architectures and uh, yeah this is p-tuning I actually like to keep p-tuning away from other PEF methods first thing is it needs uh, some kind of a template so still you need some human collaboration 
and then uh, you can see like uh, the prompt encoder is an LSTM but you can see uh, they don't add uh, these uh, trainable prompt embeddings uh, only in the beginning but they can add anywhere because it's like the template and also they swap uh, the uh, um, like uh, token embeddings of the original model with these trainable embeddings during the fine tuning for these uh, template embeddings so yeah this is like the p-tuning um, all right let's talk about prefix tuning versus prompt tuning both of these methods are same pretty much the only difference is in prefix tuning we need to add these uh, prefixes to every layer of the transformer but in prompt tuning you just need to add these uh, trainable uh, prefixes to the embedding embeddings like literally these are a bunch of vectors you just append it with uh, the uh, input embeddings and you train the model so both of these uh, two networks are in frozen state as well but you might be thinking like what what is it meant by um, kind of uh, adding this prefix to every layer the idea is like you are optimizing this uh, prefix embedding uh, with this layer with this layer and with this layer that means gradients can come from this layer to here this layer to here this layer to here so this is more like a joint optimization but here you can uh, understand the gradients come from like only from the attention because you don't touch these things right so that's the main main difference so basically it's more like keeping the prefix uh, concatenating prefix on uh, every layer versus uh, concatenating only to the input so that's pretty much it um, between pretty, that's pretty much it um, between uh, prefix tuning and prompt tuning yes adapters versus LoRa so this is like a tricky thing yes theoretically this is more like a reparameterization thing we discussed um, uh, but uh, when we think of the implementation it's kind of still the same but main difference for me is so you can see this is like a ser serial thing you add adapters here but mm, like now like what you do is basically um, you kind of uh, it's like this like a linear connection so it can make things fast you know like compared to this because and also you can easily plug and play these models and you can have several different models because like all you need to do is you need to send this from here and send that from here like that yeah in order to wrap up like adapters they are like the pioneer method in PEFT Llama adapter Llama adapter v2 and LoRa gives like the same performance and LoRa seems pretty simple and I think prefix and prompt finding can be used for multiple tasks again like prompt tuning seems simple yeah that's pretty much it thanks a lot